Welcome to your favorite program. And you see that I am presenting on behalf of the UE Open Campus, University UE, and you. And that comes every third Thursday of each month. And for the past four and a half years, we have consistently been in your homes. Not, I would think, as furniture. That too is part of it because those certificates that you have gotten and intend to get will be posted there proudly with the badge or insignia or emblem of the University of the West Indies, your university. Um, today we have a very special guest, you may say, the top of the University um, of the West Indies Open Campus Administration and leader, you may say. That is, she has been with us twice before on this program, and this is her third time. As is always said, the third time is probably better. <laughs> the third time you are lucky. To have with us today uh, Dr. Luz Longsworth. She is the Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of West Indies Open Campus, and no stranger to Dominica. She also delivered a distinguished lecture, um, the NBD and UE partnership lecture that we have been having. It was the 10th one, I think, or 9th, sorry, um, lecture. That was done at the Fort Young on, um, on Wednesday, the 13th of April. So these are the sort of intimate moments that we share with you. That is, not only on our promotional TV program every third Thursday of a month, but also bringing the best to you. UE is your friend, your partner, and we should continue to develop the Caribbean. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs. Delivered both online and face-to-face. -face. From the Caribbean's university of first choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. Let me just say, um, I'm tempted to say lose, but I have to <laughs> request her permission. Uh, as my head, I should refer to her as Dr. Longsworth, but it's not someone who, she's very humble, and is not someone who would be caught up in that formality. So if you'll permit, can I refer to you as Luz? I prefer it, Because definitely. having said that, Luz, you have to introduce yourself to the Dominican public again. Not that they have forgotten, but can you kindly do so? Certainly. Well, I am, I am Luz Longsworth, I'm principal and pro-vice chancellor of the UE Open Campus. Um, no stranger, as, as Felix has said, to, to Dominica. Uh, I think this is my fifth visit to Dominica. But in the past, um, my visit has been as the director of Open Campus Country Sites, uh, where I oversaw the administration of these sites. My role now is uh, a wider role. It is um, the leadership um, role in the Open Campus, as well as um, part of the Vice Chancellor's leadership team for the University of the West Indies generally. But it um, still allows me, thankfully, Felix, to, to be able to, to come and, and, and really meet with our staff, our students, and the publics across the Caribbean. And, and really, that is the, the, that is the most enjoyable part of, of this position, the ability to really um, interact and engage the people whom we serve and find out how we can improve what we do in the UE Open Campus. So it is good to be back, and I want to thank everyone, viewers, yourself, um, for their, for, for, for really, for their generosity and for their welcome since I've been here. I have really had a, a wonderful visit so far. And Luz, you again, as I said, humble, will not tell us that this has been a taxing week for you. <laughs> um, with you coming to Dominica, I think, was it on Monday? On Monday. On yes. Monday. And if you hear the agenda, which involve, as I said, a lecture, distinguished lecture, um, NBD UE lecture, which we have done for the past nine years, you may say, um, and um, to deliver this, and the following morning to have um, oversaid or conducted or be very much involved, uh, led the 
uh, recognition of graduate ceremony 2016 for those students who could not, uh, for whatever reason, attend the graduation ceremony of the University of West Indies Open Campus um, that was in Grenada. Um, you know, it would be a costly exercise for some of them. Some of them, it probably fell at the wrong time um, related to their work, etc. But the University of West Indies Open Campus, Dominica site, gives them an opportunity and has been doing so for at least eight years, given the opportunity to have a recognition of graduates. That is not a dilution. It, it cannot replace the actual graduation, but at least it is a, a good representation, you may say, of get, get serving again um, students who have worked very, very hard. And um, they are also honored to have the principal, the pro, um, Vice Chancellor of the University of West Indies Open Campus with us, Dr. Luz Longsworth. Um, and she did say she's also like an ambassador of the Vice Chancellor, Dr. Um, Hilary Beckles, or is he Sir Hilary? Sir Hilary. Sir Hilary. Knighted, <laughs> English gentry. Uh, soon you maybe um, you'll be called um, Baroness or no, what, what no, is it? no, 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 what no. <laughs> Dame? I think it's Dame, Dame? it's Dame, Dame. but, Dame. but Dame. I, I, I suspect that that, that, yeah. that will be very, very far away. <laughs> you never know. We you won't ne think about you that. You never know. When um, you disclose to us the vision, which is what I'd like to ask you first, of the um, Vice Chancellor, uh, Sir Hilary Beckers, um, that will be one notch closer to becoming a Dame. Dame <laughs> Lose, you'd be called. That's a nice. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Oh no, I, I, I'm not so sure. Felix. You're not sure. Well, it's not, you for, know, it's the, not for you to determine. It's not for me to determine, yes, and, um, I, and certainly one never knows. I, never. I would, I would tell you, you know. Five years ago, I wouldn't have thought I would be sitting here well, yes. with you as principal. principal. So, mm -hmm. so life is is something that we just have to embrace as it comes along, for for good and bad, um, and and know that we constantly move forward. So we won't worry about the the, the daming the, at, the, this the point. at this point. At this point. And, and with the, calling you Dame, it doesn't reduce your workload, does it? Oh, not at all. And, but uh, each time I get a different title, I get more work. So. <laughs> and um, Luz probably did not say to you, but you were in charge of the Western Warner Campus. Yes. Um, Western based in, in Montego Bay. In Montego Bay. Yes, in, in Montego Bay. Um, I had a, a brief break um, from the open campus in between 2012 and um, and last year 2015 mm -hmm. and at that time I took on the the role of the, the director of the UE Mona Western Jamaica campus which is a new campus um, mm -hmm. being established in the western part of Jamaica by the university's Mona campus and that was a, a really um, exciting experience because it is um, it was building something very new um, developing the community relationships there mm -hmm. as well as as building the, the student base and it was an extremely exciting time um, I really enjoyed well you know Felix I enjoy everything I do and um, as long as it has to do with education as long as it has to do with seeing you know especially young people improve themselves and and, and really develop then it is worth it even the late nights and and the taxing schedules as you pointed out it is it is worth it it is what we have to do and it is something that is going to be an investment in our country so well, Luz, let me just say to you and that is not in any way pampering you but if with all that work which i can um, vouch for uh, you are looking so young <laughs> eh? it seems that uh, that is what keeps you um, ageless. Oh, uh, well, thank you for the for the flattery. <laughs> it will get you everywhere. Um, but but I, I must tell yes. you that um, yes. you you should always enjoy what you do. Yes. And I think sometimes there are things that you have to do that are not not necessarily pleasant. Um, any leadership role requires um, things that are not not always nice and pleasant. But you have to focus on what is the ultimate positive outcome of all actions okay. and um, to work with the University of the West Indies to work in this institution that is so rooted and grounded 
in the development of, of this region that we love. Um, and, and you know I'm a Caribbean person. I have lived in many of the islands in the Caribbean, many of the countries, because Belize is not an island. Um, and, and seeing the, the, the wealth of talent that we have in the Caribbean and wanting to be a part of that development and that explosion of, of productivity and growth. The University of the West Indies gives me um, it, really the privilege of being a part of that movement. And, and so I consider myself to be, to be honored to, to, to be a part of this. And um, you spoke about the vice chancellor, the new vice chancellor, Sir Hillary, mm -hmm. and his vision. vision. If I, I would like to perhaps say yeah, a few that things is about what that. I was about to ask you: <laughs> Can we um, delve into the vision that the pro vice, uh, the vice chancellor, Sir Hillary Beckles? Exposed. Yes. Well, I know that Sir Hillary is no stranger to Dominica himself, uh, having worked in the region and, of course, being an expert in cricket, which <laughs> I know all Dominicans and, in fact, all of us Caribbean people uh, hold very dearly to our we heart. Are, as they say, champions. Champion. champion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's the, that's the new craze, yes. champion. The champion yes, dance, yes. right. <laughs> so, um, but Sir Hillary brings to his role as vice chancellor that, that very... Um, visceral understanding of, of the Caribbean. And he also brings what he calls an activism mm -hmm. um, that the university must adopt. Uh, he is often heard to say that, that, that we are concerned that our region is, is, is not at the top of the list of, of the regions in this hemisphere. Sure that has um, adequate higher education enrollment. So tertiary. Mm -hmm. so, so he has put out a very ambitious and aggressive agenda for all of us to, to see how we can move our people into, into tertiary education, into training, into, into our skills development, so that we can really move out of this economic crisis and, and recession that we have found ourselves in. Um, his vision, he espouses it as a triple A vision. So he speaks about access, mm -hmm. which is key for us and for the open campus. It is the, it is the reason why we are here. Reason that, depth. Uh, exactly. I, I know you are competent in, uh, in some languages. I will not reveal more to the listening and viewing public, but Luz is competent in Spanish. Um, no hablo espanol and French, and which French. is yes. we have an understanding of French yes, because of yes. our Creole. Yes. So yes, so, so, yes sorry. So, as you rightly say, our mm. our raison d'être mm. is to provide access. So from the formation of the University of the West Indies in 1948, yes. uh, our viewers should know um, that the university had started its extramural department because the university's mantra has always been that we have to bring the university to the people. Mm -hmm. That founding document of the university states, we must bring the university to the mm -hmm. people. And so we in the open campus, our role in the vice chancellor's uh, vision is enhancing that access. His, his other A's, his triple A, is, um, is alertness, alertness to all opportunities that our regional um, university can um, uh, take advantage of, given the globalized nature of our um, world these days. So the vice chancellor is, is clearly pushing an agenda of globalization, mm -hmm. of ensuring that the university remains a Caribbean university, but with a global footprint, oh, yes, a footprint. global footprint. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have to be uh, also aligned. That's the third E. And this is another element of the strategy that um, for us to progress as nations, industry and academia have to be aligned. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the developed and, and the emerging economies, those economies that are innovative, that are moving forward in development, have very strong alignment with academia, with research, research. and development. And the Vice Chancellor 
in his triple A, that's his, his third A, mm -hmm. clearly states and that we as a university, we have to move more rapidly, more proactively to work with the private sector, to work with the public sector, mm -hmm. to see how we can um, really encourage innovation. Because what we're seeing is that countries are now being divided along the lines, not of rich countries and poor countries, but innovative countries and non-innovative countries. And those countries that are not able to innovate rapidly are going to be left behind Lucky. in this knowledge economy. So, so the vision is, is a powerful one. It is one that he is, is articulating. It is one that we, as the leadership of the University of the West Indies, fully embrace and that we see will move our institution and our countries forward. Because the university and our countries are intertwined. We are formed to serve the countries. And therefore, this, I think, will help to galvanize action. It will um, help us to to come up with a new strategic plan for the period 2017 to 2022. And I think it is the way forward for not just the university, but for the, the, the Caribbean region. It's interesting, um, listening to you attentively, um, it was uh, Hilary Beckles, while being principal of the Cavill campus, made the statement to CARICOM um, that is one of our partners, and you may say public sector, um, that the goal of the, the university is to have a graduate in every household. Um, we in Dominica, that has been used repeatedly mm -hmm. as um, and accredited really to the, the prime minister of the country to have a graduate in every household. And if that is spread across the Caribbean, um, Although we recognize it to be a costly um, activity, when you say partnering with mm -hmm. the private sector, mm -hmm. that is where our research and um, uh, investment has to be made by them mm -hmm. to support the goals of the University of the West Indies. Um, and that would, uh, would, would fit in well into his um, free aid. Uh, free aid brings to mind a battery. Yes. You know the free AAA. batteries? <laughs> Triple E. Um, and it may be University of the West Indies in action uh, as, as the program of the free E. Alertness is one of them, and alignment. The first one you said was? Uh, alertness, alignment, and access. Okay, and access, access. and yeah. access. And who better to talk of access than Dr. Luz Longsworth in terms of that is the essence of the online University of the West Indies open campus we are reaching very much the underserved and had made inroads. In fact, I understood from you that in Dominica, over the past five years, some 200 and more persons yes. mm -hmm. have graduated. I think the figure is higher, um, is noting those over the, well, the, the past five years, um, I have been with the university now for eight and I think I have observed many more oh, yes. than, than, Absolutely. than two, mm -hmm. 200. So that's a conservative figure. And uh, that is one tentacle of the University of Western is the open campus, and it will reach the underserved. Mm -hmm. um, the vision again, and I like how you introduce Sir Hilary Beckles with um, the business of cricket, um, that he, he established a high performance center in right. Barbados, mm -hmm. and some people have um, benefited from it. And you as a part historian of cricket, because she loves cricket. Let me just tell you who Luz is. I think she was born in Jamaica, were you? No. no in Belize? <laughs> no. no. I was actually born in, ah. Ven in Venezuela. In Venezuela. Um, well, still in the region. In the region. In the uh, region. Uh, actually of on a uh, Jamaican father. Jamaican mother. Mother. A Venezuelan father. Venezuelan father. In Maracaibo, which yes. is on the Caribbean coast of Venezuela. Yes. So yes. I, I, I was always Caribbean. Oh, well, put it that way. You've always been seeing the Caribbean Sea. Always. Whether in Venezuela, Belize, Belize Jamaica, Jamaica, Barbados, Barbados okay. British Virgin Islands. <laughs> So, um, yes. So, so, yes, but I was raised in, in Jamaica. I, mm. I moved to Jamaica when I was just four years old. Four years, okay. And, and raised by Jamaican um, grandparents. Well, the, we are in the accent, so we so, don't. So, you know, <laughs> so cricket, my yes. grandfather taught me cricket from I was, yes. you know, a little girl. And mm. um, I, I have all, all the passion for all mm. the 
the Caribbean things, yes. cricket and all the Caribbean food and everything. So um, I, I must say that, that um, so Hillary has a way of using cricket as a metaphor yes. for, for Caribbean civilization. And um, we were certainly very proud, I must say, um, in the open campus that in the under-19 team that, that started this um, spate of winning, winning. Yes. one of our students was a member of that team in Bangladesh. And I would like to share with your viewers that, that story. Mr. Holder. Mr. Holder, <laughs> Shamar <laughs> Holder. Shamar. I'd like to share with the viewers that story um, as, a, as an indication of the flexibility of the open campus because Shamar is, is a very young cricketer mm -hmm. but once his talent was discovered it was clear that he needed to have a another platform to really shine and um, the, the scouts in Barbados picked him up and um, thought that he would really be good to go on the national scene by playing for the, um, the, the universities, the combined, combined campuses, campuses and yes. colleges. And by, by enrolling him, even though he is still doing his A-levels, mm -hmm. he was also enrolled in the open campus doing a certificate program, which complements what he is doing at A-levels and was therefore eligible to play for CCC. And it was there that he was discovered. And when the opening came up in Bangladesh, that young man was was flown from Barbados to Bangladesh. And the minute he landed, Man. you know, in fact, I remember the headlines, it said, um, Holder, um, Holder lands and takes off. <laughs> and there was a picture of him yes. in the newspaper. Takes off meaning that takes off he meaning. bowled a number of wickets oh, oh, goodness, for a few yes. runs, there uh, was six a, for something. A picture that, of that him bowling, bowling in the middle of the air, you know, so, oh, okay, so <laughs> we are so proud of that. But yes. that's significant, mm. Felix, of the flexibility the ability to, to reach to, to people who would probably not be able to get into mm. university any other way. So that is, that is really a, a symbol of what the open campus does mm. for persons who would perhaps have deferred dreams, mm -hmm. would not have had opportunities because of their inability to access tertiary education. And so we are proud to be a partner in that effort around the region of bringing education, tertiary education, to populations that are underserved, Sorry. that that would not have access normally. Um, even those persons who would not have gone through or have not succeeded in the traditional system of the CSEC and the CAPE, mm -hmm. to give them opportunities, for instance, through prior learning assessment and placement to get into a tertiary education yeah. and this is, is this is the passion of the people who work with the open campus mm -hmm. we are passionate about seeing these persons have an opportunity and we are aware that no one can be left out of the the net of tertiary education we know that the focus is often on our young people coming out of high school you know, with their C-sex, we want to see them educated and we must get them educated. But we must always remember that there are others who have had to sacrifice their education for family, for financial reasons, and are now in need of that, of that access. And I'm very happy to say that here in Dominica, we have seen at the Dominica site um, a, a really huge increase over the last three years enrollment. in enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, the, the figures I have gotten is over the last three years, we've seen a 70 percent increase. Seven zero percent mm -hmm. increase. Yes. And of course, that is a result of people wanting to better themselves. Mm -hmm. It's also a result of the open campus I producing. Can, I can just tease you, um, not just people, because that generalizes. I think I should correctly say women <laughs> a lot, exactly because uh, 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 over 70 percent of yes, women are, um, yes are, are women cohorts. and that yes, is yes. true across mm. the region yes, yes. 
Um, and you know, we are we are happy for that. Mm. That is, you know, our women must progress. We must see why our men are not enrolling as rapidly, yes. and see what areas we can improve in that. Yes. But that, but certainly more power to those women oh, yeah. who who do so because <laughs> we should expect that. Yes, we do. <laughs> A lady has just told you. <laughs> and, and also, you know, the the research shows that, of course. The, the, the households are headed by women, yes. and women that are in um, employment really are, are a huge part of a country's development. Yes. So we're happy that that is happening, but we do recognize that we, are, we, we have to do some more research mm -hmm. in how to get more of our, our men, and, and our young men in particular, yes. to come into tertiary education. Yes. So it's a, it's a major challenge um, for young, more young men to come. Luz, you gave a, a nice success story of um, Holder. Uh, you probably have a wealth of information and other success stories. Um, we just, in the context of cricket, we mentioned it, Holder. But I think I have repeatedly heard you say of one young man in Dominica oh, yes. who um, brought the, the, the population uh, at the graduation. Uh, would that have been in Antigua or uh, St. Lucia? I believe that was that graduation was Grenada. Grenada, I believe it was okay. in Grenada. And um, brought everybody to tears. Uh, to tears. That's right. You, you want to share that with us because I am saying the vision of Sir Hilary Beckles. We can measure the progress of it by the success story. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. This this was I um, Darren Pinard, yes. if I'm not mistaken. And I think he works at the. Um, NBD, that's NBD. the National right. um, Bank of Dominica. That's right, yes. and, and Darren was our valedictorian for that year in, mm -hmm. in Grenada. And his story, his story of, of effort, of, of, um, of setback, mm -hmm. you know, of trying each time to, 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 to really advance himself mm -hmm. through and education. overcome challenges, yes. Yeah. He mm -hmm. applying to, to Cape Hill, I believe it was, being rejected, applying, being accepted, but not being able to go. And then having had the opportunity right here in Dominica to pursue his bachelor's degree when he could not leave because of his family and mm -hmm. his financial circumstances. And when he spoke of overcoming that, Mm -hmm. and of the struggle and of course of the difficulty of, of studying online studying with all of the other competing priorities but still excelling yes. getting first-class honors yes. and being the valedictorian not just of Dominica's mm -hmm. graduating class but of the entire open campus mm -hmm. 600 odd students that were graduating that year to have come on top when he told his story I can tell you that even the chancellor had to comment afterwards about the really the power of, of that story that story and how much it brought home to everyone at that graduation the importance of this arm of the University of the West Indies reaching out beyond the walls of the campuses to people who are brilliant who have tremendous, tremendous potential and giving them that opportunity to contribute to their families, their communities, their country, and of course to their region. Yeah. So we, we really have many, many more stories like yes, that. Yes, like that. But with Darren Pinard, um, he must be smiling looking at this program at this time. Um, I can remember him telling me, so I took more than around five years to complete. That's right. But. Um, the journey, he really put every effort into it and, and did well. And to be the top student in the region, in the open campus in that year, you know what that means. Um, that, st that story, I think, is compelling and can motivate many of you young persons who are listening and viewing this program. You should be inspired by Darren Peanut. But Darren Peanut is no more than about five foot three inches, a little shorter than I am. but very powerful young man to have even brought Luz Longsworth and the party to tears. And that he did on behalf of the University of Western Indies Open Campus. Um, men, if you're listening to this story, if you're viewing the story, and you know Darren Pinard, he's a regular, please speak with him and join the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Embark on a program, a program for your development. 
the University of West Indies continue to look for courses that will attract, that is the open campus, um, young men. Um, and I think a lot of effort should be put into that, um, not only for sports, but for any field of endeavor. And we will continue to strive to offer programs um, which is unifying to the Caribbean region and led by the University of the West Indies. There are other universities, but between and I, as I say always on this program, none to compare to the best. Uh, you may want to call it the Helen of the West, but that is what it is. It's the best. And it brings Caribbean people together and help develop all our individual um, countries. And that story being told by the principal of the Open Campus, here is the credibility. And that's what we believe in, the credibility or, and quality of what we offer. Let's take a break for our sponsors. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs. Delivered both online and face-to-face. -face. From the Caribbean's University of First Choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. Yes, we are back um, with the principal and pro-vice-chancellor, pro-vice-chancellor and principal of the University of West Indies Open Campus, Dr. Luz Longsworth, truly Caribbean woman. And um, in this part of the program, uh, these programs are always, I say, too short. You want to be with us. You are wrapped up somewhere in your home, usually in the family room, or even while you you, you attempt to fall asleep, but it is so engrossing, it is so captivating, talking about the University of West Indies, and particularly the open campus, that I know you're listening attentively. We need to look at the expertise, you may say, of Dr. Louise Longsworth, who did her research, um, uh, PhD uh, project, you may say, um, looking at leadership, and uh, she delivered a lecture a distinguished lecture on um, Thursday, the, sorry, Wednesday the 13th of April at the Fortium. Uh, this is a joint effort with the uh, National Bank of Dominica and the University of Westminster that has been going on now for nine years. Um, the 10th, we wish we could invite again. She will elaborate more on leadership. Uh, I think everybody was a bit taken aback when they said, but how could the pro vice chancellor and principal of the open campus describe a topic of a uh, teacup in a stone. Mm -hmm. um, we usually know it the other way around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, um, was she upside down with that teacup? Um, we know a storm in a teacup. And if you recall, Erica, Erica um, last year, the 27th of April, 26th, 27th of April. That was what we had. We had a storm in, in a small island, and it was much devastation. And he also went on to present something on um, resilience. Resilience has been the answer for all the changes, and th those changes he described as disruptive changes that are taking place. Not to tear you apart, not to break that fragile teacup, but to... Um, how we should probably go addressing and what we should be addressing um, in this, this 21st century uh, in relation to um, what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Dr. Longsworth, I have attempted to, <laughs> <laughs> to say what you delivered so aptly at this lecture, but who's better to talk about it and tell us about um, what you delivered and what impact do you think it will have not only on the Dominican public, because these lectures, we do try to capture them on the YouTube, mm -hmm. um, and uh, hence persons can see what was said by Luz Longzo. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot escape your community, the Caribbean, and even more so the world. Doctor, tell us about your experience with this lecture. Okay, thank you. Well, first, let me speak to the, um, to the strange title. Mm. Um, and the title was actually inspired by Dominica because 
yes, we know the, the traditional cliche is a, a storm in a teacup. And mm -hmm. I wanted to, to, to disrupt thinking by, by, by spinning that around. But the image of a teacup in a storm speaks to fragility. Mm -hmm. And it, it speaks to the possibility of, of something being shattered. And um, what I, I was hoping was that image would actually shake people's minds up and say, well, what exactly are we talking about here? And then the, the, the second part of the title, which is leadership resilience yes. in um, disruptive change, developing leadership resilience, really speaks to how we in the Caribbean who are we are so fragile and vulnerable mm -hmm. i mean this is not uh, this is not um anything new that i am saying here you know from every walk of life people speak of the vulnerability of our countries in the caribbean vulnerability to climate change okay. issues mm -hmm. to to n the, the natural elements vulnerability to economic shock so for instance the the 2008 economic recession has, has had a multiplier effect on the Caribbean because of our open economies and our vulnerabilities. We, we speak about um, you know, our, our vulnerability to technological changes, changes as well. And the fact that it may not always be easy for us in the Caribbean to keep up with the technology. So, so the focus of the lecture was to look at what are the elements of disruptive change that face the Caribbean and how are we really to ensure that that teacup, that that fragility becomes what is called anti-fragile? Okay. Uh, one of the, the, the sources of my research. How do we fortify? How do we <laughs> fortify the teacup? teacup yes, yes. And um, so I look at leadership and, and the element of resilience. And leadership resilience is, is now an area of leadership study that is gaining quite a bit of traction. We all know when we speak of leadership of the, the terms transformational leadership, mm, yes. transactional so leadership, leadership, servant autocratic, leadership, yeah, autocratic, yes. charismatic. Yes. Those, yeah. are, those are leadership theories that have abounded for the last, I would say, last um, half a century. Okay, okay. But what we are seeing in this new environment of rapid technological change, of uncertainty, um, economic changes, crises happening every other day. Um, there, there are other elements of leadership that perhaps we need to be looking at and, and um, helping our organizational <coughs> leaders to understand. And I focus on organizations, which is really my forte, um, how they can develop resilience to change. And then I looked at, at what resilience means. Because for many of us, resilience means uh, bouncing back, yes, you know? Yes, so we, so we talk about we are resilient people. We can overcome challenges. We can bounce back. And, but I, I, I go further in the research, and I look at resilience as not just bouncing back, but what, um, what um, El Napolitano calls bouncing forward. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that in our, in our region, it is not enough to simply bounce back after a storm. We must use that as an opportunity to improve and to bounce forward and to create resilience for the next change, which we don't know what that will be. It could be another natural disaster, or it could be a new technology that disrupts how things are done in our organization, but we always have to develop that resilience and that ability to, to grasp opportunity, to see opportunity, and to even leapfrog into another phase of development. So, um, so, so you're, you're really looking at to innovation as, as absolutely. a key element. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in fact, our CARICOM strategic plan for 2015-2019, which was done, published in July 2014, states that the CARICOM mission and vision really speaks to developing resilient communities. And in their model, they speak to social resilience, technological resilience, environmental resilience. And how that is enabled in the CARICOM model is through CARICOM unity mm -hmm. in particular. And so we look at several models, and I looked at that in the, uh, in the lecture. 
models from the US in particular, North America. But the point is that we must always try to see what it is that we have here that is endemic in the Caribbean that we can use to develop that yes. resilience. And we recognize that in the Caribbean, we have certain characteristics that our people are survivors. We are survivors because we are survivors of the most horrific uh, crime committed against man, mm -hmm. and that is slavery. slavery yes. So we are already resilient. Mm -hmm. Those of us sitting here watching this, we have been through things that mm -hmm. would have wiped out other other communities, other communities. Yes. Oh, did in the past and did in the past and still do yes, yes. so so we are survivors so what is it that we can draw on that is um, you know that is really indigenous mm -hmm. in the region that can help us to move forward in face of all of the storms that that, that, that come to us um, and what we see when we look at our Caribbean um, communities is that Caribbean people are optimistic people. Yes. And some people Fun say, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and we're, you know, when you look at all the happiness in okay. the seas, Caribbean countries come really Re high. Yes. But we are, we are by nature optimistic and we've had to be optimistic yes. in order to survive in, in, in such hostile mm -hmm. environments. Mm -hmm. So that is one thing that keeps us going. Mm -hmm. So when we are not down, so to speak, we always um, come back up. Come you back know, up. Bob Marley has this lovely song that mm -hmm. I quote a lot that says, them I got tired for see me face. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Can't get me, me out of the, the race. race. Yes, and yes, I think yes. that that, yes, that, that, is, that, is that really symbolizes that, that sound. Um, yeah, that is, yeah, that is something that all of us, mm -hmm. Pathetic, wherever mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. yeah. in the Caribbean, we, 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 we yes. really feel that, that mm -hmm. we are going to survive. Yes, yes. So, so optimism and, and, and the definition of that is we expand on in, in the paper. But optimism is one thing. The second thing is that even though we might quarrel with each other, yes. we are a people that are strongly community oriented. Mm -hmm. And our community orientation speaks to how we develop relationships mm -hmm. with each other, how we really look out for each other. Sure. Yes, we might have differences of opinions mm -hmm. and quarrel, but you know what they always say? say I can cuss my people, but you mustn't cuss them, them, right? Yes. So we are, we are very, we really are a close-knit community. Mm -hmm. So even if you have quarrels between Jamaicans and, you know, other um, or Dominicans Caribbean or yes, yes. other mm -hmm. islands, mm -hmm. we are Caribbean people and we are always out there cheering for each other. Luz, we spoke about cricket earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that meant not for Jamaica, not Trinidad, alone, or Dominica. the entire region. Uh, the entire region. Yes. And even the diaspora um, of the Caribbean were so elated That's by right. we winning a simple cricket game. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, mm. I, can, I know that mm. any of us who has traveled overseas, mm. that if you are feeling lonely in a, a foreign country, and you hear any Caribbean accent, you feel you are at home, and yeah, that person yes. is is your friend, that, that you know. Is so, so right. And so mm. we 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 have a lot in common. Our, mm. We are strong in community. So in that regard, mm. the, the CARICOM model of of community is is important. Our yes. united Caribbean community is important in our resilience. Yes. And we saw it, I think, in Dominica when the entire region. Rallied, to, rallied to and, and yes. felt it. Yes. I, I was as if it happened to them, yeah, you know. Yes, yes. And and there was mm. no difference in mm. in the churches across the region. There were prayers for the people of Dominica. Mm. There was um, activity pulling together mm. aid and assistance, whatever everyone anyone so, could so, do. So let me ask. Essentially, you're seeing that we have so much in common. We are so much. You may say in it. Um, I always remember this little maxim, or not maxim, but metaphor from Africa. It takes a village to raise a child. That kind of communal and community spirit is embedded in us as Caribbean people. Um, and um, what you are asking here is how can we recognize this and maximize it to the benefit of Caribbean people? Exactly. Not excluding or isolating ourselves from the rest of the world because we are interdependent but to pull on those strengths that we have. I just quickly will tell you that um, within CARICOM, there's a microcosm 
which I'm part of, which is called the, the OECS states. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, to me, it's refreshing that when I go to one of the nine OECS states, I can use one dollar, mm -hmm. that is the EC dollar. Mm -hmm. Whereas it is, has been said that there are about 13 different currencies in our English-speaking Caribbean. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yes, yes. So, and, so and probably the only thing that may unify us is the U.S. dollar. Us. <laughs> us. Yes. Well, well, the thing yeah. is, of course, that um, we, we must continue to work towards that integration. integration yes. And in fact, the, 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 the model that I proposed, which I, I rather, I guess, facetiously call the, um, the river bank, Model of, resi of resilience. And Dominicans may be wondering, <laughs> river bank? I live on a river bank. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the thing is yes. that throughout the Caribbean, yes. what one of the things that, that disaster specialists um, note is the, is the fact that people go back and rebuild mm -hmm. on the very site of the disaster. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I, I think it is mm -hmm. not only Caribbean, but it's certainly very obvious on the river banks in the Caribbean. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so I have used that mm -hmm. to, to as a, again, as a metaphor for, for the strength and resilience. Mm -hmm. But the other side of the model has to now be how do we unleash the power of those innate yes, characteristics yes. in order to to, to protect ourselves in order for us to become anti-fragile, yes. to, to become more resilient and to move forward, mm -hmm. not just bounce back um, in terms of crises. So I speak to the need for really focusing on education and training. Mm -hmm. And, and not just because I'm an educator, but because it is clear when you look at the statistics that the countries that progress, the countries that are able to bounce forward are those that have higher levels education. of education and training. Okay. And the second related element that we must focus on is innovation. And we've already spoken about that, yes. Felix, yeah. the importance of innovation, innovation. in yeah. terms of turning our, um, mm. you know, what is our innate, our natural, our raw material, yes into value added. added. Mm -hmm. and, and here I speak not just of our products, mm -hmm. but I speak of our people, that our people are now our biggest, biggest asset, and they are our, our largest raw material. Mm -hmm. We need to add value to our people through the education and training. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? We have to, of course, look at what is a relevant technology that we can now apply in our countries to move us forward, to leapfrog us over many of the developmental um, trajectories that other countries have had. We have the benefit, I think, of not necessarily going through some of those things, and, and people have, you know, they, mm -hmm. there are, um, there are examples right throughout. Many of our rural uh, communities, for instance, were waiting for years and years and years for a telephone to get to them. Mm -hmm. a, a landline yeah? mm -hmm. and then with the coming of cellular technology most people have a cell phone but still don't even have have a landline in their homes so we were able then to access communication without necessarily going through the usual developmental path that other countries have had to to yes. do so so i am saying let us look at the technologies that we can use that are available to leapfrog development mm -hmm. to educate our people to build that resilience as leaders that's what we have to embrace in order to move our organizations yes. forward this, uh, i'm smiling while you speak because it, it brings back to memory um, when you speak of innovation um, apart from looking at the evolving technology which we all in the world have to address but you know we had a problem or we still do you may say um, of black cigar toka mm -hmm. affecting our bananas um, in parts you may say St. Lucia has overcome it yeah. uh, but we were um, sandwiched between Guadeloupe and Martinique where they had this outbreak before us um, but what I understood happened in those banana producing countries you know this seaweed that comes um, occasionally, we've seen it more and more often. The sargassum. Mm -hmm. Yes, and something, and it comes to shore. One, some bright, um, well, you may say bright, but very innovative um, farmers have taken this seaweed, which, which has an awful smell mm -hmm. when it comes to shore, and put it around the banana plant. And that, would you believe it, has solved the, the black cigar toker. It means probably the sulfur or whatever, the acidity or whatever it is, in that, it needs further research mm -hmm. by, by UWE 
or, and all other organizations, but yet it was able to stem the tide of the black cigar token right. by using a very simple method. Um, it's like you know, the steel band, we can play so much. Uh, even um, what music it is? Um, <laughs> classical music Classic. on steel band. So the, the, we do have it in us. What I need to ask you, Luz, is through that education and training um, from a very important part in, in the theory that you put forward um, and has always to be there. In what way does culture as well as resources, mm -hmm. how do these two factors um, influence um, the, 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 uh, um, uh, the theory that you have presented? The resilience. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Well, culture is an important part of, mm. the, of, of the one side of the theory because yes. I look at, at our, our sense of community, which is a part of our culture. It's mm. how we are brought up. Yes. Um, and so culture is, is, is an enabler mm -hmm. in this theory. Yes. Uh, those, obviously, every culture has positive and negative elements. elements yes. But when we look at the positive elements mm -hmm. of our Caribbean culture, the fact that really we, we, we have communities, mm -hmm. um, you know, we still have a, a, a culture of looking out for each other. Oh, yes, yes mm -hmm. there are things that are tearing apart at the fabric of mm. our communities, and we have to be aware of that. But in this theory, culture is an enabler mm. of that resilience, yes. eh? because that is, is, is what we have evolved as, mm. as people. In terms of resources, I, I, I want to go back to your point of, um, of, the, of the seaweed. The innovativeness of our people, mm. we are known as innovative people. Yes. What we have not been able to do is we have not been able to commercialize and monetize mm. that mm. In, in, in a, <laughs> in innovativeness, yes, take it to market. Mm. And this is where the university is, is key and, mm. and, and that element that the vice chancellor spoke about, an activist university and a university that aligns with industry. Mm. Right now, we had um, a, a, a seminar on the sargassum in Barbados, where mm. the university brought together all the expertise, and we are looking at how this, which is a negative thing, it, it has stifled the beaches and, and mm. threatened tourism around the region, um, can now be turned into products. Yes. And I, I, I would like to share with your viewers that we have a young researcher at the UE in Barbados who is already turning these products into cosmetics. Okay because the, the, it has very, very good um, elements for skin care yeah, and yeah. so on. Yeah. And so this is the what we the need. The sulfur background. Exactly. Or, or sulfur related and Precisely. Yes. And you mm. see, this is what your, mm. your farmers here picked up immediately, yes. that sulfur is a good element for soil regeneration, mm. and mm. so they were able to use yes. it with their, with their fertilization mm. plants. So we need to work with our people mm. who have this information. We need to help them. We need to train them to say, well, okay, well, how do, you, how do you maximize it then? Because if, if this is what you're going to use, you have to find a way to preserve it. You have mm -hmm. to find a way to, to keep it so that when you don't have sargassum washing up, you still have the elements. Okay. And so we have to reach out to mm -hmm. our, our people and, and train them in coming up with ways yeah. to, to, to develop products that can move their own product lines forward. Um, Luz, I, I raise the issue um, on culture because uh, what you have really presented is that we should probably have a positive mindset Absolutely. because there is, as you said, elements of culture that are retarding and elements that yes. lead towards um, improvement and, and that, that is very important. In terms of resource, uh, let, me, let me tease you here. Um, we know we have the potential for sports, mm -hmm. uh, not only cricket. Sports. I mean, Usain Bolt is the fastest man ever um, <laughs> from, from creation on this world. He holds the world record in both 100 and 200, and that may not change in some time. Uh, what I'm coming to is um, resources that we have, we should recognize what we have and develop it. So even our cricket, we have won three competitions recently, but I always remember when the West Indies won in England, the first um, 50 one-day match, 
I actually kissed the ground of Lord's. <laughs> um, I was in studying then, yes. and Viv Richards yes. and Collis King um, brought us home when um, you had a PhD um, 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 uh, in, the, um, in the person of, I'm trying to remember the Englishman name, but he was, you know, of Oxford, I'm mm -hmm. telling you. Um, Mike Bailey, mm -hmm. it was his name. And uh, they had batted first. And they, they are strategizing, no way the West Indies is going to win. People have forgotten that. We remember the 2020. Yes. And then Collis King and Vivian Richards transformed everything. After we had lost um, uh, Kali Sharan and, and Gordon Greenwich and these fellas there, these fellas came. And I always remember in the stands that um, some Englishmen were saying that you know, they're going to bury us. And at the end, I became Shakespearean. Uh, when we won, and I said, this is your summer of discontent. discontent yes. <laughs> well, there was silence, there was silence. But that's one thing. What I'm saying is that we are good in sports, we have the talent, mm -hmm. we need to nurture it. And I wish the Caribbean or the University of the West Indies could be leading in that, um, in hospitality. That is our lifeblood in most of the islands, we have um, tourism. Um, let me just tell you an experience of um, the South Pacific, where, um, and Philippines, the, the potential of coconut mm -hmm. uh, yes, and the yes. best oils. Yes. They are doing so much research. Gotcha. The Caribbean has a lot of coconuts. We should not only drink the, the, the young coconuts and the water, but we should get involved in that mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. um, to ge generate economic activity right. much more. And the hospitality, which is what the Caribbean is mainly about, not only we have um, several aspects that we can develop, but we have to address this. And Absolutely. Again, I know with your leadership and that of um, Sir Hilary Beckles and the other principals, etc., and really bricks and mortar campuses as well as the University of West Indies, we can do this. Your closing words, um, um, Louis, um, I cannot say to you as an, an honorary Dominican, welcome, but um, <laughs> I want you to leave us with something that we all in Dominica remember. Well, I, I don't know how memorable it, my last words can be, but really I just wanted to piggyback on what you said and to say that this, the University of the West Indies is your university, mm -hmm. and the university is looking at all of these issues. I think we really need um, to be more aligned in our community so you can know about the things that we're doing and that they can actually be be turned into to, to products, into assistance that helps the man in the community. Yes. And that's why we have the Open Campus here. The Open Campus represents university in all of our countries, and it is your university. So I really want to say to the people of Dominica, we want to continue to work with you, for you, on your behalf to improve your country, your young people your ability to 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 thrive and so i want to thank the people of dominica for their support of the university of the west indies and to say i look forward to coming back again very soon because this is certainly one of the most beautiful um, countries in in the caribbean and i i always enjoy being in dominica so thank you very much for having me felix well what can i say um if i had my way but then it has to come through nomination won't we, or will you join me in referring to us, Dame Lewis? <laughs> but that's how we started. Have a good evening. <laughs> Who are you and this Dame? I tell you.